What's going on? We're at the White House. Are you all excited? I am. T I'm so excited. Well, let me start by thanking the extraordinary performers from Hamilton. They're here. Right there. They're all here. On the stage, we have Lynn Manuel Miranda. We have David Diggs. Christopher Jackson, Mr. Washington. And the beautiful Philippa Sue. <laughs> oh. And I have to give a special shout out to the students that we have here. Yeah. We have students from Laurel High School. Yeah. I know. It's you. Osborne High School is in the house. Is that all you got? <laughs> Loudoun County High School. You, oh, oh, that's okay. You're representing on this side, though. This is, this, I have been waiting for this day for a long, long time. This day right here when we're in the White House with this amazing cast. Uh, we host a lot of special events here. We do a lot of really cool things, but this, for me personally, is the coolest. We've been waiting for this for a long time. And when I say long time, I do mean long time. <laughs> Seven years. Seven years back when the president and I first got to the White House. And here's what we thought we wanted to do. We wanted to change things up here in the White House a little bit. We wanted to open the doors really wide to a bunch of different folks who usually don't get access to this place. We also wanted to highlight all different kinds of American art on all the art form, forms, paintings, music, culture, uh, especially art forms that had never been seen in these walls. So what did we start with? We started with spoken word. Right? Because no one had ever held a poetry slam in the White House. <laughs> That's for sure. So we scoured the country looking for the hottest spoken word talent out there. And we found this young man named Lynn Manuel Miranda from New York City. And a lot of folks were raving about this guy. I mean, and I was so like, Barack and I go, oh, okay, all right, cool, cool. We can do this, we can do this. <laughs> So Lynn will remember right before the event, we do a photo line with all the artists in the blue room. So Lynn walks up and Brock and I love, it's great to meet you, Lynn, what are you gonna do tonight? And he's like, I'm gonna do a, a piece about Alexander Hamilton. Now, Barack and I, we're open-minded. <laughs> we consider ourselves creative people. But we both kind of looked at each other like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> this should be interesting. And then Lynn Manuel got on stage in the East Room, where we'll be later on today, and he got on stage in between the big portraits of uh, George and Martha Washington. <laughs> and he proceeded to perform the song Alexander Hamilton which as you all know, is the opening number of this amazing musical. And of course, we were blown away. <laughs> we were sitting there, we, there are probably shots of us sitting there with our mouths open going, who is this dude? <laughs> what is he up to? And back then, he told us that he was gonna do an entire musical uh, about Alexander Hamilton. And we knew that this had the potential of being really, really good based on his performance, but what we didn't no, could never have imagined that it would be a work of genius, true genius. Uh, I saw the off-Broadway version of Hamilton, got to meet the whole cast then. Yeah. Was I excited <laughs> enough? Was I excited enough to see you all? And it was simply, as I tell everybody, the best piece of art in any form that I have ever seen in my life. 
and I became a fan, a devotee. Uh, the cast, man, made up of such diverse, talented, oh gosh, people that I, I'd ever seen. Um, the show is creative, it is hilarious, uh, it is memorable, and I loved it so much that I saw it again when you guys went to Broadway. I don't think I came backstage, I snuck out. <laughs> and then I made my husband and my children go see it. You guys got to see them. And of course my children, because I loved it so much, they were like, it couldn't be that good. <laughs> you know, the, you know how you all are with your parents. If your mom likes it, it can't be cool. I raved about it so much, so they went in very skeptical, but they came out true believers, like everyone does when they see the show. Uh, as we all know, Hamilton has become not just a Broadway hit, but a global sensation. Uh, shows are sold out until January, February, or whatever. It is the hardest ticket to get on the planet. Um, it brought the house down at the Grammys. We all saw that. That was really cool. And it was, it's one of the best-selling cast albums in half a century, is, is what my notes are telling me here. <laughs> And that is not surprising because Hamilton is an amazing story that is beautifully told. Uh, through Hamilton, Lynn Manuel reveals all the drama and the glory, the heartbreak that run through our nation's history. Uh, and he shows us that the icons in our history books were real people with real brilliance, but also with real flaws. Uh, so really, Hamilton teaches us history the way it really should be taught. I mean, to my mind, this is what school should be. We'd have a lot of great historians if we could only figure out how to do this more for more subjects. I remember I was telling Lynn Manuel, Manuel that he's got to do this for like the Middle East and all the other issues. You got to you got to talk about slavery. You got to cover it all. And I'm just thrilled that Lynn Manuel and the cast and crew of Hamilton have committed themselves to. Uh, bringing the show and its lessons to as many young people as possible. I am just as proud of them for that kind of work as I am for their talent. They're offering reduced price tickets and squeezing in new shows, and this is true for a cast that I hear you all just got some understudies. <laughs> so, uh, they're helping over 20,000 New York City students attend at least a performance. They've developed this fabulous curriculum and materials that you all have been studying, I understand. Um, and today they've come here to spend the day with all of you. I think you all are probably some of the luckiest young people on the planet right now, right here today. <laughs> and as we were saying backstage, this is really a full circle moment for us in so many ways. Uh, seven years later, that first performance won our hearts, and Lynn Manuel is back at the White House with the entire cast with this amazing crew of young people. Uh, so I'm excited, uh, and I want to thank Lynn Manuel and the entire Hamilton cast and crew. Thank you for moving mountains to be here. We know you guys are so busy and taking the time out to spend an entire day here and to uh, just bless us with another performance this evening is, you know, it's cool. Uh, it's really cool. So you guys, I want you to take advantage of this time. I know we're in the White House, and I know it seems all fancy. Uh, it is fancy. <laughs> But ask questions, don't be shy, um, talk a lot. Uh, no, really, really, this really, we're doing this for you. Um, and I also want you, because this is such a special moment, to find a way that you're gonna, you know, move this forward. Because there are a lot of kids who would love to be in this seat. So what are you gonna do to spread this energy when you leave here? Who else can you touch, you know, who could benefit from the time that you'll have? Um, we think the world of young people in this country, that's why every time we do an amazing performance like this, where we have big fancy folks at night, we make sure that we bring the young people in so that they get a special touch um, because you guys are our future. And you have a president and a first lady who love you to death. We love you like you're our kids. 
and we want the absolute best for you. We want to expose you to the absolute best that this country and this world has to offer. Uh, and then we expect you to do great things with it. Be really good people with strong values, love education, be kind to each other, and be leaders uh, in your community in whatever way you can. We need you. We need good, smart, young people running the world. So enjoy this time. Uh, you guys, be good. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen when I leave, but I'll be watching. <laughs> and I'll see everyone later on this evening. So have a great time. So we're gonna take a couple questions um, to start out. Um, Juan from Osborne, I know, uh, had, had something to say. So you can come on up here. Hi, um, I'm Juan Zapata, and I'm from Osborne High School. Um, <laughs> Uh, first of all, I love you all so much, and I, um, so my question would be, I'm not a really bright student in the history department. I do not retain information based on memory well, um, and for you guys to convey history in, a, in the manner that you did, and I actually do love theater with my entire being, um, I've learned so much from this musical that I wouldn't have normally learned in a history class, not because... It's just my brain does not retain information well. <laughs> and was that your initial goal, to inspire kids like me or a new generation of students who might be struggling in the history department? Hi, Juan. Thank you for that amazing question. Um, Lynn here. Uh, I wrote the thing. Um, the, honestly, I was just like you. Um, I was not a history major. I was a theater major. I figured out who I was exactly the same way you did through the school play. What I knew about history was what was in musicals. So I know a weird amount about Ava Perone. I know a weird amount about 1776. I know about a certain phantom in a certain opera house in Paris. Um, and, um, and that's what I knew before I picked up Ron Chernow's book. And what I recognized when I picked up the book um, was uh, someone who had an inc a remarkable life. And at the end of the second chapter, when he writes that essay that gets him off the island, I go, if this guy's life isn't a musical, I don't know what is. Um, I know this dude. I know this dude, and I think his, his, um, his, he's a rapper. Um, and, and people always, you know, it's funny. If you watch the footage of when I first performed in this room, I say the same thing, and the crowd laughs. Um, but what do our favorite hip-hop artists do if not write about their struggle and their circumstances so well that they transcend them. And that's exactly what Hamilton did. That was, that was the entire initial impulse. The bonus of writing about Hamilton is that you get to learn about the founding of our country because he's just there for all the most important parts. He is, as we say, in the room where it happens. He's by Washington in the war. He's in Washington's cabinet. Um, he's defending the Constitution. And so um, telling the story forced us um, to learn about this era, um, and I'd love to pass it off to some of the other actors who, you know, embodying these characters had to learn about, uh, about, these, about this part of American history. Chris? I think you shortchanged yourself. You, you remember quite a bit. <laughs> In my high school, we didn't have a theater program. History was my drama, was my drama program. I saw each and every moment in history as the most dramatic moment ever, which it was to the people who were taking part in it. Um, I think that there's a, a great deal of, of uh, heart and blood and bone in, in your history lessons. I think maybe it just you might just take a second and look at it from the perspective of who's the protagonist, who's the antagonist, what's at stake, how would they, very much in the work that you did in, in our session today, how would they talk to one another if, if it weren't just these these words on a page by rote. If it wasn't just the date that you had to memorize that they lived or they died on this date or this happened on this date, you might find a world that you, there to unlock in the, much in the same way that you experience when you, you know, listen to our show. Just a thought. It's in you. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Um, you all have inspired me a lot, and I just uh, thank you. Great. Thank you, Juan. Appreciate it. Um, Yalissa from Laurel, come on down. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Yalissa Cargbo, and I am from Laurel High School. 
And um, my question is with the unique and amazing play of Hamilton, production of Hamilton, why was it so important for you to get this cast with so many diverse people, whether it comes from the gender or your race or ethnicity, why was it so important for you to get all of these different people with different backgrounds together as one? Um, that was a really uh, um, early and essential conversation that we had when we were thinking about how to, how to make this world. Um, the reality is we wanted to eliminate any distance between then and now. So if the world looked like now and sounded like now and moved like now, then perhaps what we were able to do there is build a bridge. And it wasn't a long bridge. It was one that could get us there. You know, the generosity of this company and of what Lynn has done in this show is that Lynn doesn't stand on the mountaintop and tell you all the things that he knows. What this company does every night with these words and with the way that uh, they embody these characters is they build that bridge and they build that ladder and they say, come here, come be with us. So it was an invitation. It was an invitation to everybody. Because not only is this a story about a time that, that sometimes feels like it's sepia toned, it sometimes feels like uh, it was in the distance, it was black and white, it was, it was in vivid color for everybody who was living it. And so what we wanted to try to do was to create something that could be as close to you in the audience as possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brody from Loudon. <laughs> Hi, I'm oh man. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brody Brown from Loudon County High School. And uh, my question is uh, specifically directed at Mr. Miranda. Um, Hamilton is a musical that sort of bridges the gap between musical theater, which is a very niche category of music, and pop music, which is such a remarkable achievement. And I just wanted to know, since I, I know so many people in here are probably inspired by you, who inspired you? Who do you try to emulate? Do you, do you take, uh, not emulate necessarily, but do you take notes from contemporary music or from classical music? Like, what inspires you? That's a fantastic question. The answer is all of it. Um, the answer is all of it because Hamilton required so much more of me than I, I ever reached for before. I, um, you know, I always say that when, when I got the idea for Hamilton, I feel like a mosquito that hit an artery. Um, it just kept giving uh, the more research I did. And to that end, um, your question is about genre. There are some people who only like musical theater. There are some people who only like hip hop. The rest of us just like whatever's good. Um, and so to that end, I try to use every possible music at my disposal. And what I think the best musicals do, and, and again, and here, my, my heroes are Candor and Ebb and Stephen Sondheim and Charles Strauss and all of these greats. Um, but also, um, you marry a type of music to a character. You know, when one when this character enters, this is their pulse, and this is how they enter the world. So when Hamilton starts rapping in Francis Tavern, he's trying to impress everyone in that room, and he's trying to show them, I'm really smart, I know I have no money and I have no connections, but I'm smarter than all of you, I swear. So he has these insane polysyllabic raps, and to those I look to Eminem and Big Pun and Rakim and all of the MCs who rhyme 12 syllables on a line, uh, when one at the end of the line would suffice. Um, contrast that um, with King George, um, who is literally representing a British invasion. So what better British Invasion to write the most Beatlesque music I possibly could? Um, you'll hear the getting better guitars. You'll hear Alex Lacamoire, our music director, even snuck in a Mr. Kite reference somewhere in there. Um, and, um, and so he's full Beatles. And then the fun is in smashing all that in together. That's how you get a score. Um, and so in terms of the influences, it's everything I know from Shakespeare to the Bible to podcasts I listen to to Biggie. Uh, there's a lot of Biggie in the score. Um, I, you know, I'm, I grew up in the East Coast in the 90s. Um, and so that was the music of my teenagehood. And so that's, that's well represented uh, in the score. And so, um, I, so I guess the, the short answer is I try to use all of it. I try to use whatever works. It's a continuation of Tommy's answer about eliminating distance. I'm going to use whatever the thing is that's going to get you to where the story is and, and, and keep you involved. Fantastic question. Thank you.
Great. So we, can we do a couple more? Um, so, so folks, we're going to take a couple questions. And I will say, if you don't, uh, just because time exists and we probably won't be able to answer all of the questions, um, the internet is your friend. And so, hashtag ban for ham. Um, so I think almost everybody up here is also on Twitter. As you know, so, so reach out to them. It's an, this is a company that thrives and lives on that kind of interaction. So if we don't get to you here, please know that the conversation goes on, OK? 